Hi, I'm Mindy Whitten. Welcome to the studio. Sorry I'm a bit late with the video this week. I got a bit sidetracked at the weekend. I went out to buy some putty to finish a project and ended up buying this little gem here. If I can just show you my new workbench. It's a, a tool bench, but it, I just loved all these drawers. They're fantastic for keeping my boxes of pastels in. So as you can imagine, I, I got home with the workbench and I just had to uh, clean out the whole studio. I had to remove some stuff I had. I had to fill up all the drawers and I thought it wouldn't take me long but a day and a half later I finally got it how I want. In the process I came across my pan pastels. I haven't used them for a while so I thought why not do a quick demo with that for our, our lesson this week. Pan pastels are just the pastel uh, pigment, pure pastel pigment in little pancakes. Um, and I've got a whole set of them here so I'm just going to pop them out and I'll just do a very small painting just to demonstrate what you can do with them. Along with that in the box I have some tools, just some little plastic tools that you can slot on little sponge tips and they help you with the painting because as you can imagine you haven't got a stick to paint with you have to dab it into the pan. I've got a whole lot of tips here you just wash them out in between. I have, dif I have different shapes, they're just uh, sort of mimicking brush shapes. I've got some bigger shapes too, some wedges. So I'll just unpack them all and then we'll... This is the photo I've chosen to work from. Um, just some distant hazy sky mountains and then this lovely foreground vegetation and the sea. There are a few rocks thrown in. This is the palette I've chosen to work with. It's not perfect but we'll see how it goes. So it's just a small painting and I'm going to start by uh, just roughing in some of the background there and I'm going to use the rounded one. So all I do is take my pastel pan, rub this across the top and then I start putting it in and you can see it just goes on smoothly like so. It's great for blending. This is probably something I would use more for, for a background than for a full painting although you can do a full painting with it and you have to get a lot on there to actually make a great coverage and that's why I, I chose this sort of muted uh, scene and I chose the purpley colour background because I don't have that in the pan pastels and there's purpley coming across there. I've got that in now maybe I want to make something a little bit sharper there so what I can do now is take one of my um, oblongs and I've got two surface areas, two sharpnesses, that one and that one. I also have a little square end and an oblong if I wanted to do a whole lot like so. And what I want to do here is just uh, run across there with my horizon line and I'm just going to make that a bit darker. So I'm taking the darker blue and rubbing my pastel across it like that and I'm just going to then draw it straight across there. <laughs> when I say straight I obviously don't mean straight do I? There's, there's sponges in they bend but you get the idea. Oh, I'll just dab that in there again and make a hard straight line across there. And the sponges start to make a soft line there for the the mountains there. And so I can just rub in a bit more with the side of that sponge there, wiggle it around a bit to make the shapes I want. Sort of mountain view back there. Now if I want to put in some more colours I can take another sponge here. I've got a different shape but I'm going to take some of these other shapes and I'm going to put some more colours in there. There's sort of a uh, uh, orange, uh, yellowy green colour. Not too much of it. I just want a bit of a touch of it in the, the background there. So I'm just giving that a little bit. I might even now take the other end and rub it in my purple violet sort of colour and give it a little touch of that back there too. Make it a little bit more colourful. So I'm getting my distance in now. If I want something a bit darker, again I, I can try using one of these ones. If I don't want it so sharp then I can take my darker blue and just do some modelling there using that just to get a bit of more depth in there and you can layer as with when you're just using the pastel straight 
The little square sponges are quite good. They're like a flat brush. And what I want to do now is just put in some sea there's blue. And just wipe it straight across there. Just adding on as I need to. In it comes. You have great control over how much pastel you're releasing here just by how uh, as with a pastel stick how firmly you press on there right a blue i've got some more mountains here what i'm going to do is just put in a bit more of the the water there first with the mountains i'm just going to take uh, one of these round ones and i'm going to start with some sort of just dipping my way into various colours there, adding them in as I go. I might even take a bit of that redder colour. Now I want to add in some lighter colours there for the edges around there so now I'm going to use the tip of that sponge and I'm going to actually dab it in this sort of paley pinky sandy colour. And I'm going to just start layering in some of that around the edges. And I can draw up into it with that. And just keep going round. Now, what I probably should have done is, is trial this out on white for instead of the because you, you don't you're absolutely not getting the the density and, and coverage that you would with uh, just the stick packs pastels but it's, it's for a different kind of painting it's it's for the the more atmospheric one I'll, that's how I would describe it and now I'm just going to put a little bit of white in with the sand as well just touch as I can there coming in here and I'm just layering in with some lighter blues now Layering in some blues for the sea there. I'm going to take a greeny sort of blue as well. And I'll be putting in all sorts of blues here and just blending them in with this sponge. It works very well as a blender. more of the darker colours back there. And you just push it in with the, the sponge. I, I'd like to put some little highlights back there and I'm going to actually take that pink I used again, this little pink, putting my sponge in and I'm going to lay in a few little highlights across the top there. And I'll also take light and give it a bit of a, just on the edges there. And I'll, I'll come back to that, I'm not really happy with that, but as I say, I haven't got all the right colours here, so I'm, I'm just playing with it as I go. It's a, a pinker sort of colour, so I might go back in with that, which is not the right colour, but it's, it's more in keeping with what I want. Put a few blues in there too. And and mix in the pinks with it. And a bit of maybe a little bit of Now along here I've got some green so I just need another sponge. So you do go through the sponges. One of the problems with these stacking dishes is I've, I've got a green here I really want but I can't get into it. Maybe I need the WD-40, not sure. But what I'm going to do now is just load up this sponge and I'm just going to make some sort of area there that approximates that grass with some lights in it and some 
and there'll be some some of the rocky headlands coming out there and then I'm going to go for a much lighter for this this grassy area here so that's quite quite light comes all the way around here and I'll be putting in some rocks soon but this is just that grassy area um, it's quite a bit darker back in this area and I'm going to use some of my blues in there too and just make some darker areas there just getting in some of the different um, colors and values there uh, it's going to have some quite light bits there and I'm actually going to be putting those in with a creamy sort of yellow color uh, just to start with just to establish the the main shapes and then I'll be going into a grey I really want something a bit warmer but uh, I might put some more I might actually use a little bit of that orange in amongst it just to warm it up a bit and again just using the, the tips of those sponges to do that so a few of the rocks going in slightly changing the colouring because of what I've got here and I'll add in a bit of pinks as well along there pinks down and, and this and I'm trying not to dirty it up too much so I'll go back to my pink brush a pink sponge and put some of those pinks in there and then there's a whole lot of little rocks shapes back in here that I'm going to just pop in and out here on the headland we'll just use some of that underpainting for the the cliffy bits there and I'll pop in some of those pinks just a few highlights there using that pink one and I'm just going to put in some more rocks again down here using that I could go back to my sponges again and if you've got a colour you don't want on one side, you can just turn it over and use the other side. And so I'm just going to try and make some more shapes there with the sponge for these rocks. Just randomly going over there. Uh, adding in a few greys. I'm going to go back to a rounded brush and I'll be pulling out some of the yellows and greens and, and going in with that and then coming back with the deeper blue. So I'm mixing the, the greens out of the blue and the yellow there because I haven't got the ones that I want. It's, it's, and I've got a very deep one, a dark blue up here, so I'm going to try that. This is a very slightly gritted sanded paper, it's a homemade one out of foam core and a bit of grit so uh, it might be worth trying if you've got some pan pastels trying it uh, using the honeycomb sort of waffle paper instead. Over here is a bit of a shadow so I'm popping that in, a little bit of the violets and the blues and the shadow and I'm not I'm not getting really deep dark colours there, um, I'm getting enough of a guide to it and I can just use one of the little makeup brushes to go back into my deeper blue. One of the problems is that I don't have really dark colours in this, but never fear. I'm just putting some shadows in along, along there, so the shadowed side of the rocks. I can go back into this with pencils, I can go over it with other pastels, so we might add a little bit in with some other pastels as well. Uh, and I'll just put some highlights down, sorry, some shadows down in the along the cliffy bits there. And maybe a few out there using that brush. that area there 
there's some more sort of vegetation so just making that a little bit more in amongst the sand dunes so I wanted to put those sand dunes back in again now so I just pop in a bit of this put in a little bit of the sand there and I'll put in some of the the waves coming the wavelets coming around here so what I'm doing is just going to suggest a path coming down and here and you can see I can use that wide end of the brush just to make the path coming out like so very easy just in a stroke but now I might like to put in some uh, big grasses or something so I'm just taking a, a darker color and jabbing the end of that in there and then you can just run it over like so and if you want some lighter ones going with the, the lighter colour bring some of those grasses so I'm just putting in some foreground grasses that needs a lot more shadow there so I'm just going over the whole path up around there down the side of that rock with some shadows. So it's a very gentle uh, sort of underpainting. Now if I wanted to beef it up a bit I could just take um, some of my pastels You can see I can go straight over what I've got there as a background. Just rub it in, draw right into it. I can draw back over those grasses. I can give the rocks a bit more definition there. Around the edge of the path. And then back into there with some grasses. This bit here, I need to go back in with my. and pastels and, and give that some more colour, more hints of waves and variations in the sea there with that one. These are a few of my handmade pastels. They've got some nice colours that will work well with the so I'm just going to add a little bit of those in. I like that for the rock. So this is just sort of graphically adding a little bit more detail over what I've already sketched in. So if I'm using pan pastels, I have to confess I don't use them that, that much because I am a girl who likes a fair amount of colour. So no, I don't use them too much, but I have used them for some quite nice atmospheric paintings that I've done. So there's the original uh, photo and uh, painting with just a little bit of extra pastel dabbed on it. So thanks for joining me in the studio today. I'm Lindy Witten. Bye for now. See you next time.